When Elon Musk's SpaceX got into the business of rocket making, it promised reusability, lower launch costs, and easier access to space. Over the last few years, the company has taken steps to make good on that promise, thanks in large part to the success of its Falcon 9. Through a lot of determination and consistency in using new technologies, SpaceX has been able to land rockets back on Earth. This has made space travel more popular as the claims made by SpaceX to move people to Mars may actually become a reality in the near future. Landing rockets after being launched into space seemed like an impossible thing to do, but SpaceX did the impossible as now they have a track record of landing rockets with accuracy. In this video, we'll be looking at how SpaceX is able to land these rockets with remarkable accuracy. Watch this video until the end and don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you haven't done so already. For the past decade, the world has marveled at how much SpaceX has revolutionized rocket technology and space travel. Their ambitious plan of launching a space car into orbit and colonizing Mars have garnered a lot of attention never seen before. The wide coverage it has gotten is the largest so far and is only similar to NASA's Apollo program about 40 years ago. The core of their amazing pursuits is one of the greatest developments in the history of rocket engineering, which is being able to reuse rockets. The SpaceX reusable launch system development program was first announced in 2011, and was set to create reusable rockets that would largely reduce the cost of launching rockets. It is a privately funded program that's designed to develop a set of new technologies for an orbital aircraft. SpaceX has been developing the technologies over several years to facilitate the full and rapid reusability of space launch vehicles. In order for them to achieve this, SpaceX decided to undertake the recovery of rockets using power descent. Their plan was to be able to launch a rocket vertically into orbit and then return it to Earth in a controlled descent and vertical landing and specific landing site, either on land or on the seas. In the past few years, SpaceX has not only been able to create a reusable rocket, but has proven that it is reliable and economical to use the relaunch system. So, how exactly are they able to get their 70 meter long rockets with a mass of about 500 kilograms to land vertically on the ground? This happens based on two particular things. Experience and perfectly engineered rockets. We're going to be taking a look at the history of the reusable launch system development program. The program was launched in 2011 and did not successfully land any Falcon 9 boosters until 2015. It took about two years after this to have a good landing rate for successive launches. They spent five years experimenting with their landings and testing technologies, as they learned to develop new rockets. The first try was a vertical takeoff and landing with a rocket known as the Grasshopper. This vehicle completed eight successful flights, from 2012 to 2013. Given that there was some success with the Grasshopper, they went on to equip the Falcon 9 boosters for power descent and tested its landing from 2013 to 2015. The first tests were initially just to be able to land between the first 10 kilometers. However, with subsequent tests, there was an improvement. Much later in the year 2015, there were tests on an autonomous drone ship, which ended in failures when four consecutive barge landings failed dramatically. In spite of the failures they encountered, they used the experience, they used the data they got from these to redesign and redeploy for a better vehicle. More Falcon 9 landing tests were performed in 2015 and 2016, both on drone ships and on land. By early 2017, the successful landings started to become a normal occurrence as the SpaceX team had gotten the hang of it. From that time, landing tests ceased being referred to as experimental. Up until early 2018, SpaceX was able to boast of 100% landing accuracy for up to 10 meters. The improvement in the accuracy from 2013 to 2018 was phenomenal, showcasing almost a change of 1,000 times. Now it's time to shift our focus from the experience to the actual building of the perfectly engineered rocket. Whenever the Falcon 9 is launched, the rocket separates into two stages in the upper atmosphere. The payload is carried into space by the second stage, while the first stage returns to Earth at a landing site for reuse. The booster is pre-controlled to go through a specified flight path and must also perform a series of controlled maneuvers so that the path can be maintained and the vehicle would land vertically on the landing pad. The particular flight path is dependent on whether or not the rocket lands on a floating drone ship on the ocean or on land. Landing at sea makes the landing a bit more complex as the ship would have to be located with precision as the rocket tries to touch down. The toughest engineering challenge encountered by SpaceX 
is the development and research to build a rocket capable of understanding all the controls and maneuvers. This movement includes those movements necessary for a controlled landing. Immediately, both stages are separated, and the first stage recalibrates itself and moves back in the direction of the Earth, so that the best trajectory towards the Earth is obtained. As the stage descends, the booster goes through a re-entry burn as it gets closer to the Earth. This is done to reduce velocity as it comes closer to the ground. As the booster is almost at the landing site, another reorientation takes place so that it is confirmed that it is in line with the landing pad. A landing burn then occurs to bring its velocity to zero as it touches down on the landing pad. Throughout the whole flight, from the separation of stages to the landing, the orientational velocity is continually measured and the trajectory is adjusted constantly to ensure that the correct flight path is maintained. For SpaceX to properly achieve this, several rocket technologies have been worked on all having been examined through the expertise of the SpaceX team. Some of these technologies are pivotal to the reusability of these highly sophisticated vehicles. Number 1. Thrust Factor Control The Merlin engines were the engines using hydraulic actuators, which were there to adjust the thrust as needed. There had to be a way to vary the thrust factor while changing orientation both in the Earth's atmosphere and in space. In space, aerodynamic control surfaces such as fins don't have any effect. Thrust factoring is normally used for rockets as well as military equipment like missiles, but it could only be used when absolutely necessary when the Falcon 9 needs to be able to maneuver easily. Number 2. Cold Gas Thrusters Eight nitrogen cold gas tanks are mounted on top of the Falcon 9's first stage. One part is on each side of the rocket, having four thrusters each. The cold gas thrusters are vital for the orientational control in the rocket. They are particularly useful for the flip maneuver of the rocket after the first stage is separated from the second. This is due to the large lever arm of the rocket between the rocket and the center of mass. It's also used to control the rocket at times during the flight when the gimbal and main engines are no longer working. Number 3. Reignitable Engines Given that the first stage has to perform burns three different times, the main rocket engines require reignitable engines. Thus. The first stage booster is designed in such a way that it can reignite at supersonic speeds, as well as in the lower atmosphere at transonic speeds. Number 4. Inertial Navigation and Global Positioning System The Falcon 9 uses several types of positioning and navigational systems, each with different types of sensors used to dictate the position or orientation and velocity of the rocket. The Global Positioning System is also important for geolocation. The computer on board gets data in real time from the INS and the GPS and continually checks if it's according to the pre-designed flight path. Whenever there's any deviations detected, the rocket can be adjusted as required. Number 5. Deployable Landing Gear For vertical landings to be possible, the Falcon 9 has four lightweight landing legs which are used with high-pressure helium just before they land. Each leg is made up of carbon fiber and aluminium. An added feature is the impact attenuator, which is necessary for hard landings. The total span of the deployed landing gear is about 18 meters, while the entire landing system does not weigh more than 2100 kilograms. Number 6. Deployable Grid Fins Four titanium grid fins are mounted at the top of the first stage booster. They're usually deployed when the rocket is returning back to the Earth's lower atmosphere. The fins are aerodynamic control surfaces used for precise control of the orientation of the rockets right before landing. Just those four grid fins are primarily responsible for the 10 meter landing accuracy of the Falcon 9 first stage booster. They were first used in the fifth attempt of the reusable launch program in 2015. Iterations of the design continued through 2017, and this is what has given SpaceX the landing accuracy that it has today. SpaceX successfully employs years of experience and useful rocket technologies to accurately land rockets, and they have gotten a lot more in store for us. We will simply wait until we can finally get that summer trip to Mars. As of 2020, SpaceX is actively developing the Starship system with the intent to make it a fully reusable two-stage launch vehicle, intended to replace all of its existing launch vehicles and spacecraft used for satellite delivery and human transport. Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy and Dragon, and also eventually support flights to the Moon and Mars. In addition, it could also be used for point-to-point -point transportation on Earth. Kindly tell us your comments about SpaceX methods down below. Do they have much more to offer? Will Elon Musk have to give up on his dreams? Most definitely not. We would have to wait and see what he has up his sleeve. 
Thanks for watching this video. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.